In today's episode, we continue with the interview with Dr. Price Pritchett. He will discuss the difference between noise and signal, as well as an in-depth discussion on his 20-50-30 principle. If you haven't already listened to part one of the interview, please start there. Welcome to this edition of Peak Performance Podcast with your host, Thor Conklin. Thor will be sharing the necessary tools, strategies, and psychology you'll need to become a peak performer in any area of your life or business. Thor Conklin here. We give you the tricks, the tips, the tools, the strategy, the technology, and the psychology peak performers use in order to get more done and execute at the highest level. If you know what to do but struggle with getting it all done, or simply want to raise your game to the next level, this podcast is for you. Sit back and enjoy. Tell us a little bit about the Eclipse program that you're working on. Well, we, I have written over 30 business and personal oriented handbooks like the U Squared book. We have a number of those that have sold well over millions, a million copies. And we still sell a lot of the handbooks, but if you'll think of it, it's kind of like Cliff's Notes for business. That's what the book looks like. It looks like a Cliff's Notes little handbook. I started producing those in about 1986, I guess it was. And over the years, as I say, we've done 30 of them. We've got, I've got four hardbacks that I've done and so forth. But anyway, when the handbooks for years and years, companies bought them by the thousands and thousands for their people, because people would read them. They wouldn't read a 150-page hardback book, but they would read this little handbook because it was carefully written, very tight, and we would try to seduce the reader through the book because it was not just something that made sense for the company. It made sense for the person as well. Interesting thing happened over the last 10 years or so. People's attention span has shrunk so amazingly, and the handbooks now I'm talking like a 35-page handbook with a generous amount of white space, okay? <laughs> but a very impactful message in it, but just so tightly written. Well, that's more than people want to read now. That's the crazy thing. And so, whereas Clips was like taking a 150-page book message and distilling it down to 35 airy pages, Clips takes a handbook and brings it down to 60-second messaging, and so Clips is, well, I would describe it as, it's, it's a me minute. It's, it's a minute for you. It, and these are 60-second videos. Some of them might be a little bit less. A few might edge slightly over 60 seconds. But these are videos that are aimed at helping a person with self-directed change. It's just a little coaching message. And we can do so much more, so much more power in our messaging with technology than we could with a handbook. Because in these videos, we've got sound, we've got video, you've got, you can use color very generously. And the more you can compress a message, the more powerful it becomes. You know, and so we get rid of the noise and, and we're just fanatic about not wasting anybody's time. So twice a week, Let's say a company has 1,000 people, and they say, okay, we want this series on U squared, maybe for our salespeople. we got got 1,000 people in our sales organization. So twice a week, these people would be getting a message that amplifies the messages in U squared and kind of helps them sustain their effort. Because, as I said a while ago, the big problem when people set goals is – the adherence problem. People, they kind of fizzle out. Yeah. And so the clips are designed to be very seductive, entertaining. It's like in 60 seconds, I've discovered this. I can articulate 12 sentences if I don't make them long sentences. So it's like 60 seconds, 12 sentences, one very pointed message to the individual. And so it's, it's just like a super quick coaching and kind of inspirational message that's coming at the person to guide them, to coach them, to empower them, to, and also to hold them accountable. It, 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 all of the handbooks that I've done over the years have a very clear message of personal accountability, which frankly is a very empowering message when you realize 
that you're the most powerful person in your life. And that's, that's how we start clips. You're the most powerful person in your life. And you've got great capacity for change. I did my dissertation on self-directed change and personal achievement. And so that's how far back this goes. All of these years, that's, you know, and that eventually led to the U Squared Handbook and a number of the other publications that we've turned out. So, yeah. Thor, I don't know. That... It is really well done. I've really enjoyed the video clips. And I think the messaging is so important. It's, it's one of the reasons I started this podcast is I saw people wanting to learn more, wanting to learn more, wanting, to, but they weren't following through what they already knew. They weren't executing. Yeah. And why learn something new if you're not going to execute on what you already know? It, it's, it's kind of funny. You know, I've got a number of clients that are in healthcare and I've talked with any number of MDs about how people, they won't even stay on their medicine when they've been told, if you don't stay on this medicine, you're, you're going to die. Or if you don't change your lifestyle and begin to get some cardiovascular exercise going, you are going to die. It is truly amazing how hard a time people have making some shifts in their life that will, that will give them life. And so I have a deep, deep respect for what people are really like. <laughs> and, and so we work within reality here. Yeah, you got to meet we, them where they are. We know human beings, you know. Yeah. And, you know, when you start talking about it, success and achievement and, and those kinds of things, it's not so much about telling people what to do. I mean, we could go on and on until Christmas, just <laughs> you and I, about things sure. they should do that would be helpful. It's mainly about helping them sustain the effort and and helping them deal with their own resistance, with the breakdowns that are self-propagated. It's kind of interesting. In working with organizations that are in the middle of a merger integration process, for example, or it could be an organization going through any kind of major change, it's so predictable how people are going to react. And we call it the 20-50-30 principle. 20% 20 of the people in your workforce will get on board. Company A is going to merge with company B, okay? 20% of the people, they'll get on board. They'll help you drive the change. Maybe because they can see that they're going to win big in the process, or maybe just because they got a high tolerance for ambiguity, or maybe just because they're super-duper employees and they consider that their, their responsibility. But 20% of the people will get on board. About 50% of your workforce kind of sit on the fence. They kind of take a wait-and-see attitude. Okay, well, I'm going to wait and see how this plays out. I don't know how I feel about it yet. So they're not helping like they should. They're still taking the full paycheck, but they're probably not carrying their share of the freight. And then you're going to have 30% that are going to resist. And they resist in all kinds of different ways. Some of it's very overt. Some of it's covert, just passive aggressiveness or whatever. But that 20, 50, 30 is so predictable. Here's what I have found when people start on establishing a new stretch goal for themselves and particularly if it's a quantum leap goal you know if they're trying to skip several rungs on the ladder yeah. same breakout 20 percent of me or 20 percent of you if we set that kind of goal for ourselves 20 percent of ourself is gung-ho i mean we're all for it we're excited we're pumped we can we're focusing on the payoff down there we're having a good time about 50 percent of ourselves though is kind of, I hope this works out. God, I don't know what this is going to require of me. Is this going to be worth the effort? I just don't know yet. And so you got about 50% of yourself that's very half-hearted at best. And you got about 30% of yourself that's going to resist. And Interesting. It, it is fascinating. Interesting. And, and here, so let me go back to the organization. And we resist in all kinds of ways, but it's there. And people aren't prepared for that part of themselves. They're not prepared for these psychological dynamics inside themselves. Nobody's told them, hey, dude, this is what's going to happen. So, gear, so tape up, you know. So let's go back to an organization now, a corporate setting. So we will tell top management when they start on a major change initiative. It could be a merger integration process. It could be a restructuring. It could be, you know, major culture change, whatever. We'll tell them. Okay, here's how it's going to break out, 20, 50, 30. Well, what does management do if they're not careful? They listen to the resistors because the resistors are making the most noise. Mm. And 
So they listen to the resistors, they pay attention to them, to all the moaning and complaining and griping and pessimism, and that reinforces the resistors. They need to be given their attention to the change agents, that 20% that's really driving it. And then, secondly, trying to recruit those people that are on the fence, the 50% of the organization that's on the fence, trying to recruit them into the change agent gang. They need to turn their back on the resistors. And that's one of the key messages we give to senior management when they go into a major change effort. Well, that same pattern needs to apply in dealing with ourselves when we embark on a, long, a large change. The resistance is going to come, and you just need to shut it out. You need to pay it. You need to listen to your hero voice, that that 20% of you that's your cheerleader that's, that's excited and pumped, and give some attention to the 50% that's on the fence and try to recruit it up there into the change agent gang. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's funny. I did an episode a couple of weeks ago, and it was talking about a rowboat and using that as an analogy for organizations where you have the rowers, then you yeah. got some people in the rowboat that are just sitting by not doing anything. And then you've got the person at the bottom of the ocean on the anchor line, and you don't even see them, but they're just kind of dragging you backwards. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, the idea is, you know, figure out how to get that anchor back on board or cut them loose. And then the people that are just sitting around not doing much, get them to start rowing. So, yeah. uh, and I love the uh, percentages that you gave. That's, that's really interesting. It, it's so predictable. I mean, and we, listen, I'm not just saying I think this is the way it is. I've got decades of experience with major, you know, multi-billion dollar firms. We've been involved in helping companies in the integration process with some of the largest mergers in the world. And I'm telling you, it is there in spades. It is so predictable. And it's so easy for managers just, just instinctively, they go toward the resistors. Yeah. It's, and here's kind of an analogy. Let's say we've got a group of protesters. And let's say that, let's say I'm the, the CEO of some major corporation. And it's some big chemical company, we'll say. And we've got a group of protesters that are protesting one of our products, and they say it's bad for the environment. Okay. Forget the fact whether it's a legitimate grap or not for the moment. That doesn't matter for my purposes here. But let's say we've got 25 people, and they're going to protest outside this corporate headquarters today at 3 o'clock. What does that group of protesters want more than anything? They want attention. Yep, your attention. Let me get the news media out here if I can. Boy, see if I can get on the evening news. Let's see if we can get it written up in the newspaper. And that and nothing gets rid of the protesters quicker than inattention. If you ignore the protesters, they go away. That is great advice. I know that you're working on signal versus noise and how that affects execution. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, I mentioned um, in passing a few minutes ago in our conversation that how much attention span has dropped in recent years. If you think about it, every person just about it, in the, certainly in this country and in most other countries, carries a cell phone today. Even three-year-olds will use a cell phone, you know, Three years, we've got three years <laughs> making videos out there. And so what has happened is the noise level has gone through the roof because everybody has become a broadcasting station. And what we're finding is that people don't open emails anymore. Companies are having a major communication crisis, crisis internally because people don't, people don't uh, open their emails. You know, we've got round-the-clock news. I mean, and, and so the, the noise volume has become so huge that messages aren't getting through. And that's another reason why we went in the direction of our CLIPS uh, messaging strategy, because we see companies getting just beat up, clobbered, if you will, by messaging failures that cause the organization, the, the people have confusion regarding what are the real priorities. Uh, the brand, the company brand gets muddy it's an amazing waste of people's time and productivity isn't what it should be. So much of this is that problem of excessive noise. I think it's very safe to say that 95% of the information you're exposed to, that all of us are exposed to these days, is, is noise. It's clutter. At the most, 
maybe 5% is signal. Signal is what counts. Signal is the information carrier. And noise is all of the unwanted effect on signals. It, it adds no real value. But because technology today makes it so easy for everyone to, the, to add to the information flow, the noise level just keeps going up and up and up. And so what studies are showing is that all of these, you know, if you look at our smartphones and our computers and all these other devices around us, we got all these beeps and the rings and the flashing images and the vibrations that break our train of thought. And people uh, came across a term a few weeks ago. That it was in an article, and they were talking about the only thing people pay attention to now is glanceable content. I'll look at something if I can just glance at it and get it and go on. But for me to stop, to really pause and dig into some kind of message, it really has to be good. It, it probably needs to be visual. It needs to be somewhat entertaining. It needs to have, it needs to give something to me or it needs to be very, very different so that it, I'm so surprised or taken aback by the nature of the message that I pay attention yeah. to it. Needs to interrupt that pattern. Yeah. And studies are showing, you've probably read this too, Thor, that people, we actually get hooked on a chemical in our body called dopamine. <laughs> yeah, I know it well. Yeah, because we just, we get this little hit, if you will, of dopamine when we get pinged that we got a new text, I just got an email, or my cell phone's ringing, you know, and we become our own worst interrupters because of all the noise. And so clips is about cutting through all that noise with a message that counts, the, the message that offers something to the individual. And we get in, make our point, and get out just in a matter of seconds. Well, they are really well done, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to my next one. That concludes part two of our interview with Dr. Price Pritchett. Please tune in later this week for part three. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already done so, please head over to iTunes and subscribe to the show. Also, please share this with family, friends, coworkers, or anyone that could benefit from this information. To make it very easy to share these episodes, simply go to my Facebook page, Thor Conklin, click on the episode that you want to share, and you can post it to your timeline. You just might be helping one of your friends on Facebook by sharing it on your page. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Thor Conklin. The website is thorconklin.com. The email is info at Thor Conklin. While at the website, please sign up for our weekly newsletter with additional tricks, tips, tools, and psychology on how to be a peak performer. Remember, these episodes are anywhere between 6 and 35 minutes and are meant to be consumed during dot time doing other things. Until tomorrow, have an absolutely amazing day.